Back in the early 2000s, I used to have these two young boys that would come up to my house every Sunday afternoon, and they would preach the Word of God to me. Their mom would bring them to my driveway. She'd park at the end of the driveway. The two boys would walk up, knock on the door, uh, and talk to me about church and God and all that good stuff. And uh, I was never rude, never hateful, always really polite to them, and I'd always make a, a joke, you know, uh, that the church would probably burn down if I walked in it. So just kind of lighthearted stuff, and uh, they'd get a couple of laughs, I'd tell them a couple of jokes, and they'd be on their way. Well, this went on every Sunday like clockwork for as long as I can remember. Well, one Sunday, I'm in my front yard working on an old truck I had. Now, I've always had five or six vehicles at a time. Just always have. Now, sometimes I've got five or six really good vehicles. Sometimes I've got five or six really crappy vehicles. They're old. They're antiques. They need restored. They're going to be worth a lot of money when they are restored. But I go through phases. Well, at this point in time, I was going through, I had about five or six junky vehicles phases. So this one old truck that I'm working on, it's my main means of transportation at that time. So, like I said, I'm out in the front yard, I'm working on it. Well, Sunday afternoon, the mom parks it in the driveway, the two boys come walking up. Now, I'm having some electrical issues, so my truck's not starting. So I'm trying to start it, go in the underhood, fiddle with some stuff, try to start it. So I'm getting frustrated, I'm back and forth, back and forth. I've got to get this thing going because I've got to be at work Monday morning. So the boys come up and they start talking to me and, you know, I just let them know. I'm not rude, not hateful. I just say, guys, i got to get my truck going. Uh, don't have time right now. I appreciate you coming by, but I'll catch you guys next Sunday. i got to get this thing going. No worries, no problems. They waved, me, they waved at me. They went on about their way and I kept working on the, on the vehicle. Well, here comes the mom storming up the driveway coming up. Hateful, rude, nasty. Those boys are just trying to teach you the word of God and talk to you about Jesus and this and that. I was like, ma'am, I understand. I talk to those boys every Sunday when they come up here. I'm not rude. I'm not hateful. I wasn't rude and hateful. It's just them. I was letting them know I've got to work on my truck. Well, all they're trying to do is teach you this. Ma'am. I understand. I talk to them every weekend. I know what they're trying to do. I don't have a problem with it. I'm okay with it. Well, how, if you'll just let God in your life, he'll fix your truck and he'll make things right. Ma'am, God's not going to fix my truck. Okay? I'm going to fix my truck. I'm going to get it going. And if, if, if you'll just leave me alone, I can get that done because I've got to go to work Monday morning. So she kept on three or four minutes just a little, little, little hateful and rude. And so finally I was like, I'll tell you what. You sit in my truck, I'm going to go under the hood, and I'm going to fiddle with some stuff. I'll tell you to hit the key. If it don't work, I'm going to try some other stuff. I'll tell you to hit the key. If it don't work, try some other stuff. And this shouldn't take more than five, ten minutes. Well, they ain't got time for that, she said. They got to make other rounds and go to other places. And she just doesn't have time for that. And she's got to talk to other people about the Lord and this and that. So I'm like, huh. So you want me to stop what I'm doing, take time out of my schedule, Stop working on my truck that gets me to my job. My job gets me money. That money pays my bills. Those bills assure that we have electricity and light and a roof over our, my kids' head, buys us our groceries. You want me to stop working on that, but yet you can't stop doing what you're doing and give me five minutes of your time to help me work on my truck. So... She just didn't ever get it. She didn't understand, so she kind of got huffy and got mad, and so she stormed off. Well, I kept working on the old truck, and about two or three rounds later, I got it working. So had she just stayed and hit that key a couple of times, I would have got the truck running and going. The boys could have came up. They could have gave me their spill. Everything would have been great. So for about 20 years, I've pondered on that story. And I've just always saw the bad in that lady. And I've just never told this story to where it had any kind of a benefit towards her. I've always told it to where I was the good guy and I'm the one that's trying to make it out like, you know, hey, I'll help you, you help me kind of thing. And as I've gotten older, 
I've realized that, you know, everybody's got their own story and their own problems that they're trying to hash out. So I just got to thinking a lot about that lady and maybe, you know, she had a lot of issues going on. Maybe her and her husband had just got a divorce and she's just thrown herself into the church and she's trying to throw her kids into the church or, you know, maybe she's got some demons she's fighting. Maybe she's this close to driving those kids in the lake and drowning them in that car or something. I don't know. But, you know, maybe maybe me sitting there and listening to those boys tell that story was just what she needed to get her through every day that, that you know, she was existing. So, I don't know, guys. If you're in a situation and... You're, you're in the and you're dealing with what I was dealing with then. Maybe just step back, take a few minutes, listen to what that person has to say, and maybe that's all they need for that day is just for somebody to listen to what they're saying and somebody to help them get through with whatever demons they're battling at the time. Because the stuff that we're dealing with that's gonna take ten or fifteen minutes, it's it's not so important that it can't wait and let somebody else that's maybe not. Not as stable as as what we like to think that we are. Maybe kind of get through their day and maybe that'll help them, you know, get on with life and and deal with their inner demons that they got. But anyway, guys, that's it. I just want to tell you that story. Just kind of how when you're younger, you think one way. And as you get older, you kind of start thinking another way. So if you're a young hothead out there right now and everybody pisses you off and makes you mad, I promise as you get older... That stuff won't affect you, and you'll actually start thinking about those people and, and kind of wonder, hmm, maybe they got something going on that I don't know about. Maybe I need to, you know, see if I can help them or listen to them. But I wish I would have stopped what I was doing. I wish I would have listened to those boys that day. Uh, and then every Sunday after that, they could have came and gave me their spiel. But never saw them again after that. The lady never. She always passed our driveway and went to everybody else's houses. And I always wondered what happened to those two boys and that woman. But, oh, well. Can't please everybody. Can't make everybody happy. So that's it, guys. Just want to tell you that quick story. That's 20 years ago, and I don't know why I still think about it, but I do. But anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.